Hello everyone. This is something a little different. A, about a month ago, I went to a board game and video gaming convention here in North Carolina. Uh, typically they sell, you know, board games and card games and things like that, but I happened to find this sealed copy of the computer game Wishbringer by Infocom, who are my favorite software publisher. They made uh, amazing text adventure games. And this is one I actually owned back in the day. And uh, what I loved about this game, apart from it just being a great game, is that uh, this game included a glow-in-the-dark stone as a prop. And I had this game, and I took the stone to school one day and showed it to a couple of friends, and I never got it back. And I, uh, that's always annoyed me <laughs> that I lost my Wishbringer stone. So... Uh, when I happened to see this game for sale, Sealed, the only computer game I saw at the whole convention, I could not leave it behind. And uh, these Sealed Infocom games typically sell for uh, quite a bit of money. And this one, um, I asked the guy how much he wanted for it, and he said, I don't know, five bucks? So a $5 Sealed Infocom game, I couldn't leave it behind. So we are going to unbox it today. Uh, however, I do want to say that, uh, oops, again, trying to do this one-handed. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, picture on the back of the box, and I noticed that the Wishbringer stone is not shown in the contents. So I know the later pressings of this game didn't actually include the stone. So does this copy include a stone or not? We shall find out. I don't remember if the stone was included in the original illustration or not. So... Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. This will probably be the last time in my entire life that I get to unbox an Infocom game. So uh, let's show you this was, uh, uh, whenever this was sold, it looks like in Babbage's software, much missed, and uh, fourteen ninety five dollars at the time. Uh, that was kind of like the clearance price. I know this game was like $35 when it first came out. But uh, let's crack it open and see what's inside. All right, we have got that shrink wrap off now and I uh, have not peeked, so we're gonna open it together for the very first time. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I always love this packaging where they had the comments from the fans of the game. I'll let you pause and read those if you want to, but uh, uh, always a lot of fun to look at these. And I remember this book very well, it told the as though it were a library book. It told the history of the town where the game is set and the history of the Wishwinger Stone. Beautiful. Beautiful. I remember these pictures so well and this story. Thermofax the Dragon. I definitely remember, remember the role he played. All right. If you pause, you should be able to read all this. <laughs> and definitely lots of good flavor text for anyone interested in finding it. Yep, and of course in the game you can use the stone to uh, wish for things to make your quest easier. Rain, advice, flight, darkness, foresight, luck, and freedom. But the great thing about the game is that you could use the wishes to help you get through the puzzles, but you could actually beat the game without using any wishes. And in fact, that's the only way to get the full score. So, yeah, very nice, very nice. And then here's, of course, the instruction manual for the game. So we just really skip through here. And this is a game where, of course, you type in commands, usually verbs with nouns and some adjectives to decide what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, some more types of commands you can type in this game. Really fun game. I think I could still play this game start to finish very easily. I still remember the path through it. This is the first Infocom game I ever beat, though not the first one I ever played. So, okay, we're almost getting to the point where we're going to find out if the stone is in the box. <laughs> I'm betting probably not, but we could su be surprised. <gasps> it is! <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's actually in there. I did not for a second think it would be. Wow, now I'm even more impressed. 
and even more delighted to have paid five bucks for this. Wow. And this stone glows in the dark. Now, I remember this stone having a very strange smell. Let's check it out now. No, it just smells like plastic. <laughs> it doesn't have the, the strange smell that my other one did, but it looks exactly the same. I can't believe this is in here. That is amazing. I am overjoyed. I cannot even tell you how happy I am about that. I have missed this for 30 odd years when I had my, my other copy. <laughs> Oh, take that school bully who stole my Wishbringer stone. I have it back. And of course, here's the game. Uh, in the game, you are tasked with delivering a letter to the old lady in the magic shop. And uh, at one point, the game will tell you to open this letter and read it. So this is kind of the copy protection. Uh, and I think my old letter was sealed, but this one does not appear to be. And I still remember what the letter, vaguely what the letter said, just telling you you have to rescue the cat from the evil one here come on open <laughs> there we go again one-handed is hard yes deliver the magic stone to me before the moon sets or you will never see your cat again spoiler alert if you haven't played the game now you know what that letter says i probably should have warned you ahead of time uh here's the wonderful map i remember it has the the town of festeroon i believe it's called uh festeron uh, and Theria, and this is the map of the game. Let's spread this out so you can see it. Wow. And yeah, you start here at the post office, and you have to get up here, up the mountain, to the magic shop to deliver the letter. Once you do, the town changes and becomes evil, and then you have to search the same map, but like an evil version of the map, to find uh, the cat and the Wishbringer Stone and return it to the old lady in the magic shop. Uh, just a wonderful game. So many memories here. I, again, I can still play this game, I think, from memory. Uh, starting in here, this is the librarian's house. This is the library, the fountain, where you can find uh, a coin and or a piranha based on when in the game you go. Um, there's a little magical path here that will appear at some points in the game, but not others. There's the lighthouse here where you can make a, a friend. Uh, the beachside arcade here, which is the solution to a puzzle in the second half of the game. Of course, the church, uh, the police station, and the graveyard where you'll have some excellent adventures. Uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. And uh, I just cannot believe I've got the stone back. <laughs> Amazing. I even looked on eBay to see if anybody was selling a loose stone at one time, and I couldn't find one. And copies that have the stone tended to go for like um, $50, $70. So uh, here's the reference card on how to boot the game. Very cool. I had it on the Commodore 64 originally, so cool. I still have a copy of this game digitally, so I can still play this. And of course, wow, how long has it been since I've held a five and a quarter inch floppy disk in my hand? I can't even remember. I bet it's been many years. Yep. Good old floppy disk with the Inficom sleeve. I always loved that gray sleeve. Very beautiful, very tasteful. Ah. And what do we have here? Are you ready for the next dimension in comic books? I don't remember. I don't know what this is. Oh, these are the Info Comics. Yeah, late in Infocom's career, they began selling what they called digital comic books that you could read on your home computer. And I don't know if, I never had any of these. I don't know if they had any like choose your own adventure style play or if it was arcade style play or if it was literally just reading a comic book. Uh, if you know, please let me know because I never, I never played these. I wasn't really interested. I liked the text games. And lastly, uh, my nails are too short to get this out. Let's see, which address is this? That's Cambridge Drive. So that was they, they had two addresses. There was 55 Wheeler Street was the first one, and then they moved to 125 Cambridge Park Drive, and then they moved to California at the very end after most of the original folks were gone. So uh, this looks like their middle address. Very nice. And warranty registration card. Yeah, no point in sending this in now. The company is long defunct. It was acquired by Activision, and... Um, just kind of became a boutique label for a while, but they have Infocom hasn't put out anything in years and years that I can remember. So, uh, all right, well, we'll go ahead and put this back in and uh, just thank you again for, for hanging out with me and for the excitement 
of seeing <laughs> the Wishbringer Stone. I really did not think that was going to be a thing. So woohoo, I have some magic today. Thanks a lot. Please like and subscribe.